Alright, hey, what's up everyone? So, uh, part two, Slenderman. And what we'll be doing in this tutorial is we will be adding a movable background or we'll be expanding the world in a way. So, you really need to pay attention because if you get lost and if you mess up, then it's really going to screw up the whole project. And it'd be really hard to fix because you had to go in and find everything. But, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to match the color of your background as best you can. So, since I already have a bit of a darker green, let's see if to match up with the background. There we go. And I'll go ahead and label this one as the coordinates of 0, 0. Now we're going to duplicate this a couple dozen times. So go ahead and duplicate it until you have about five. We're gonna, do, we're gonna try to do at least baby steps. And then go into the next one, which is almost identical. We will call this one zero, one. This one will be one, one. The next right will be one, zero. I think you guys can kind of see where we're going in the pattern and whatnot. So let's keep on going. Next one will be negative one zero and then we we'll need to duplicate a couple more times duplicate about only two more so we'll probably only need about a total of seven seven or nine not sure we'll see when we get there next one will be zero and negative one and then negative one and negative one okay there we go now we can continue to add the code so when uh, adding the code to our new sprites that we have here uh, to make it easier on ourselves, we can uh, go back to our main player, and then this little piece of code right here, our set y to scroll y plus 480 times 0. We can take that along with the x and just drag it and drop it into each sprite. and then making sure to put it back in the, the proper place. Now before we continue, uh, we should go ahead and duplicate two more times because I remembered what other uh, the other ones that we have to do. We have to do one and then negative one and then we have to do negative one and one okay now we can take this place it in a forever loop and then when flag is clicked and now according to what the name of our sprite is is what the set y and set x will be so since this is already zero we don't have to do anything and we can move on to the next one which is 0 and y I'm sorry 0 and 1 so since 
x comes first, which means that's 0, and then y comes second, so that should mean we set our y to 1. And then x on that one stays to 0. On this one, they should both be 1, so it matches up with this. Go ahead and place the when flag is collecting forever loop, and just kind of do this with all of them. Okay, so quick uh, quick review. As long as you followed what I just did, by that I mean you gave it the correct name, and then by using the name that was above and placing it into the correct columns and the set Y and the set X, then you should be at the same place that I'm at. Now, before we can properly run this and s to see if we actually did it right, Let's go ahead and go to our current sprites, such as our player, our light, Slenderman, and the static. And now they are all hidden by the uh, our new sprites that we made. So to bring them to the front, simply just go to looks, and then double click on go to front. So that way we can activate that little script without actually having to plug it into anything. There we go. Now we need to add some landmarks so we can figure out our boundaries. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to decorate some trees along with, uh, you know, uh, on these uh, costumes. So I'll go ahead and time, time lapse it, whatever, time lapse. Alright, now that we finished with our platforms over here, as we look over towards the motion of our player, to make things a little bit easier, uh, just go ahead and we're going to need um, get about when spacebar key is pressed, you want to duplicate that about four times to where we have a total of four. And then get about four forever if statements. And what this is, it's basically just a forever loop with an if statement. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more compact. And just go ahead and match this up to whatever uh, keys you're using for movement. So for me, you know, A, D, W, and S is what I prefer. You might prefer arrow keys on the other hand, or I don't know, some other, maybe the numbers keyboard or something. W and S, and simply just, you know, put the A with the A, the D with the D, W with W, S and S. Just kind of like transfer the necessary lines or blocks.
Okay, now that we have these, what we'll need next is uh, we need to go to operators and we need to gather and and then the greater and less than. And we'll be placing these together like this. You want to go ahead and you want to duplicate about four. And then be placing your key blank pressed in it. Then we'll be adding 100 to each of these blanks on the right. Actually, make it a hundred and one. Okay, and next we'll be going to motion, and we want to pull out two x positions and then two y positions. This is for the current x position and the current y position. And just go ahead and slide it in. X position will go with D and A. And then the Y position will go with W and S. Then we want to go to our A right here. Change it to a negative 101. And then we'll change our symbol around where it's if a key is pressed and our current x position is greater than negative 101 then let that occur so we're basically going to do that to a and then we'll also do that to s so we'll go over we'll change the 101 to a negative and then we'll flip the symbol around there we go so if we run this we should stop moving when we get to 100 y and 100 x yep there we go so that's working so far. Now let's add it to where it will stop right there, but then the map itself will start moving. So when flag is clicked, forever if, and then we want to duplicate this to a total of four. And then we will pretty much have almost the same thing. So if you want to, you can go ahead and you can duplicate and have A in one section, D in the other. Just to make it simpler, you can just, you know, duplicate. Alright, there we go. All of them are duplicated. Now we can go into adding our variables. And for W and S, it will be scroll Y. It will be change scroll Y. Then we'll change it by 3. But in W, it's going to be a negative 3. Same with D and A. It'll but it'll be scroll X. D will be negative three, and then A will be three. 
all you have to do is uh, just adjust a couple more things. So go to, for the variables, go to our W, and we'll change this to 100, and just flip the sign around. Basically just flip the sign around on every single one. And then change all the 100s and 1s to just 100. If it's a negative, keep the negative. But just get rid of that one. Alright, now let's go ahead and run this. Okay, there we go. Now we are moving up and away, and we are at 1 and 0. Now my coordinates are kind of, the numbers are kind of messed up because that should be 0 and 1, but can't always be perfect. Over here is 1 and 1. Yeah, I guess I'll pass. Down here, we will have oh, I guess we passed it, but uh, here is one and negative one. And then zero and negative one. and then negative one negative one so as you can see we basically made a whole uh... a whole world that's about the uh... i would say a, a three by three yeah that seems about right about a three by three world so it's a lot bigger than a regular just having a box and this will allow us to add more things into our game and hopefully you make it a more an enjoyable experience. And that's all that we're doing for this tutorial. Yeah, so that's all that we're doing for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, part three will be out shortly.